Well, hello everybody, Smithy here, and today we're going to take a look at this fantastic spiraling global temperatures chart. And this was done by Ed Hawkins at Ed and Scott Hawkins and the Climate Lab Book AC UK. And uh, this is playing it in normal time. You can see it goes from 1850 all the way through to April 2016. And you can see from the spiral, it looks really cool. And it goes outwards and outwards up towards 1.5 degrees C. So let's go and take a look at this uh, another way. I'm going to go and slow it down now. So this is going to be half speed, which gives you a bit more indication. Now the colour scheme is called Viridis, uh, and you can see the temperatures, global temperatures, very steady around the 1800s, 1900s, going up and down. I'm going to take a closer look at a minute, and then it starts 33. It starts going out more and continuing outward. Uh, and we'll come back to that anomaly that's uh, still sticking out and then they're going lighter and lighter in the 80s. That, and then suddenly now after 90s, they really start going out right out into this year where there's a big jump to nearly hitting 1.5. So where did this data set come from? Well, the data set from 1850 all the way through to present day comes from the Met Office, uh, Hadley, UK, and collaboration with the University of East Anglia. Now, there are some anomalies on this, which we're going to go and have a look at. And uh, these can all be listed on uh, Ed Hawkins' uh, uh, account and uh, on the web page as well. So you can go and have a look there. So who is Ed Hawkins? Well, Ed Hawkins is a climate scientist from the National Centre of Atmospheric Science at the University of Reading, England, and he was one of the contributing authors of the IPCC fifth assessment report and can be found at the address links in the video description. Right, so we're going to have a quick look at some of the anomalies now and go through them to explain why the chart has got, has got uh, a few things early on and then what the last few years might mean to us in the future on this earth and now we're also waiting for the may data so let's go and have a look it's really slow motion and look at various bits so let's start and uh, we'll just kick off and uh, go quite slowly as we are and we'll start if we start with the 1850s of course and the data why does it start at 1850 because that's the first time we've actually got some reliable data but uh, Quite interestingly, uh, it sort of goes quite quickly and then literally in the 1880s, it's sort of just meandering around at this level uh, and it sort of goes and then suddenly what you'll see is it changes. And as we slide out here to the, uh, literally to 1877, suddenly it goes out uh, quite a way and this is the first anomaly. So there we go, it goes whack whack round round and then back down now interestingly enough you'll see this pattern again later but uh, looking at the comments it is a very strong el nino event which is very similar to what we've just had over the last few months so it literally then but then goes back and cools for a few years you can just see it sits here and then sort of cools over the late 1880s uh, to 1910 now as if that's because of volcanic eruptions so the Earth's temperature cooled over that period of time for a number of years and then literally starts going out again to the 1900s. Uh, 1910, uh, basically to 1940, it really starts warming up again. You can see that coolness there uh, as it is. And then we literally go and start warming up and it starts expanding out. Uh, as I said, the colour change is due to the colours used under this programme. And it just keeps expanding. Look, you can see now it's starting to really go out until 1950s. And the 1950s, it sort of stays flat again. Uh, basically, they've blamed or put this down to cooling of sulphate aerosols. So it maintained again to that certain level, which masked the greenhouse gases. Uh, warming up the atmosphere. So then we come to 1980 as a search you can see it's just sitting there and this is where it starts changing. So this is where we get strong warming now uh, pushing higher and we'll come to 1998 watch this there's a bit of a jump in 98, 97, 98 so we've got that same circle that comes out that is another El uh, Nino event in the Pacific go and have a look at that see what that is if you're not sure and that warms the temperature, but it doesn't go back to its previous, and this is what happens each time. 
and we go start going up and up and expanding towards the 1.5 remember those two degrees is what the world has said it would like the keep to keep the temperature to so get into 1.5 or near 1.5 in 2016 is way ahead of schedule and you can just see it warming then literally now late 2015 we've got the El Nino in the Pacific and it then comes round as you can see to the present day which is the latest data is March and uh, in fact it what would be good to show is actually April is higher again and we're just waiting for the May now what's the implications the implications are that right in the center here going back to the 1850s there has been a remarkable uh, temperature rise and due to the fact that the equal uh, equal time the CO2 in the atmosphere has got bigger and bigger and it's just past the 400 uh, threshold and it seems to be going up weekly although it's been quite stable the last couple of weeks so that is it that's the video uh, I was uh, really interested it's really got me interested into the global wind picture I've been paying uh, been reading about it now but I've now felt that it's time that the world will need to act they really do need to act uh, and there's a load of other data and other data is the latest ice melt in the polar region which I'll be showing in a video and I'll be showing another version of this graph because uh, Ed Hawkins has got a few graphs on his uh, Twitter and website which make a lot of interesting reading so I hope you enjoyed this little ana analytic event and uh, I hope you come back to see some more videos thanks very much indeed and bye bye for now